Hello everybody and welcome back. This is going to be a one-year review on my Franke Affinity Elite. I've been using this gun for a little bit over a year. I think I bought it like uh, November, December of last year. I only used it on one hunt last season, two seasons ago. And this last season, I used it the entire time. As you can tell already, I really like this gun. Let's go over it a little bit better now. Again, I said this is the Franke Affinity Elite. This is the three and a half inch version, so it does take three and a half inch shells. This is the OptiFade Waterfowl Marsh in a 28 inch long barrel. And again, I just wanna make sure that you guys can see that the gun is unloaded. I do also still have my shot cam mounted on this gun. Let me know if you guys want me to do a one year review on the shot cam as well. I was one of the first people to ever get my hands on one of these guns uh, two years ago now. And you know, there wasn't many videos out there on YouTube of how to tear it down, uh, how to shim it, how it patterns. So I was one of the very first ones to do that. Now I'm probably going to be the first one doing a one year, one season review on this gun. This gun does cost $1,250, uh, quite a bargain compared to the Benelli Super Black Eagle and it does still use a lot of the same components. It's driven on the same inertia system that the Benelli's use. Uh, it's not a gas gun. And this is one of the reasons that I purchased it. I had been using a Benelli Supernova up until this point, and then I wanted to get a semi-auto, getting into waterfowl hunting a lot more. The pump action Supernova had been working really great, but you can get off couple more shots with the semi-auto that you just can't get with the pump action. One of the main reasons that I bought this gun is I just love how it feels. It's nice and slender up here in the front. It does shoulder really well. Exactly when I pick it up, cheek down on the gun, uh, my eye goes right down the rib. I'm gonna get into a few of the individual components of this gun a little bit later on in the video that make it unique and other reasons why I like it. I do not think this gun weighs very much. However, I do use some three and a half inch shells and it still manages that kick pretty well. I do have the uh, shim and the counterweight installed in the stock, so that helps a little bit better, um, especially with a little bit longer 28 inch barrel to kind of balance that gun out a little bit better. Also, the uh, shot cam on the end adds a little bit weight to that end of the barrel as well, so having that counterweight in the stock definitely helps out a lot. I put thousands of shells through this uh, gun this last couple years, whether it be just target loads, um, all the way up into three and a half inch BB shot. My standard go-to Winchester, I like to go ahead and front load two of these shells for waterfowl hunting. Um, use number four shot for teal in early season. And then once we get into regular duck hunting, I uh, use number two shot. I usually front load, like I said, two of these three inch Winchester shells. And then I do the very last shot shell as a three and a half inch black cloud. Number two, I do use number four for uh, teal as well. And you know, that one has been working really good for me. The black clouds allow you to get a little bit longer range on these. I am probably gonna be doing a test in the next couple videos as well. I'd like to kind of put together a comparison with ballistic gel, testing out the various shot shells, number two, uh, number four, BB shot and showing how much they penetrate, as well as maybe testing a few of the tungsten and business shells out there and actually see how far and how much more velocity and penetration those shells get. Like I said, I put thousands of shells through this gun just last year and there's been zero failures that were actually a fault of the gun itself. I did have one failure out hunting that the bolt actually wasn't all the way up. So I pulled the trigger, got a click, just hammered that bolt all the way forward position in it shot and I was still able to pick up that bird though. Um, this was not a fault of the Frank Affinity Elite. I apparently had released that bolt and not allowed it to actually slam forward all the way. I know that's kind of a common occurrence with some of the Benelli's and other inertia guns. You really gotta make sure that bolt is all the way forward. I had been cleaning this gun every few hunts. I think it's probably been about five hunts near the end of the season, maybe three hunts that I hadn't cleaned it. Uh, you can maybe see a little bit of powder in there. These black clouds definitely uh, do not burn up all the powder. Winchesters are a little bit better about that, but that is going to be my next video. I'm gonna film right after this as a complete teardown, 
cleaning and reassembly of the Franke Affinity Elite. There were a couple times out there in the wetland marsh as well that it took a little bit of a swim. I fell down, got a little bit of water in my waders. Gun also went all the way underwater. Picked it right back up out of the water, drained it all out, shot perfectly fine. I uh, went back home that night and actually waterproofed it all, oiled it all down, and there's zero rust on the gun, um, performing just as it had been beforehand. Also, the shot cam took a swim. Good thing that is waterproof as well because, you know, nothing happened to it, dropping it in the water. All right, well, that's kind of a broad overview of this last year using the Frankie Affinity Elite. Now I'm gonna switch over to my other camera and we'll be able to take a little bit closer look at some of the details on this gun. The first thing you may notice about this gun is the actual Cerakote finish right here. Let's get a little bit closer look. Some people may think that this looks really cool, shows off how rugged the gun is, how much abuse it's seen. I, however, do not. Uh, that is not supposed to happen. This Cerakote is supposed to be some pretty tough stuff, it is supposed to be permanently bonded right to the metal of the gun. And to see this flaking off, just this top gold finish, is not normal. This should be bonded right onto the metal, and if it was flaking off, you should see that flaking right on the metal itself, not black like this. I am going to be sending this in for an RMA, kind of under warranty. These Frankies do have a seven-year warranty, and I hope it's covered because... I have not abused this gun at all. Actually, if I went and got my Benelli Supernova that I've been using for 10 years, you would not see a scratch on that thing. It has the same Cerakote finish that's supposed to be being used on these. I posted a few pictures on Facebook asking if others have seen this, and there has been others that have had this happen on their Affinity Elites as well. They think it's from oil being on the actual gun itself, and then when it's coated, uh, this oil residue does not allow a good bonding surface and it starts flaking off like this. I will do an update when I get the gun back from RMA, um, the return merchant authorization, to Franke, and hopefully they're able to cover this. I'm not sure what they will be able to do if they will actually just go ahead and recoat uh, the Cerakote on this or if they just send a new gun. Not really sure how that's going to work, so again, I will provide an update on what's going to happen with this, but again, um, this is kind of the biggest thing that I've noticed with this gun. If I had known that this was going to happen, I don't know if I would still buy the gun. Again, these guns, they're made for waterfowl hunting. They do see a lot of abuse, and everyone has pretty much scratches on their guns, just kind of good old stories that the guns went through, and uh, they do see a lot of abuse, but my guns usually do not it doesn't bother me that much, but yeah. I think I would still go ahead and purchase this gun, even knowing this for people out there wondering if, if they should or not. But if the looks of your gun definitely matter to you, definitely take this into account. I know not everybody's Affinity Elites have did this, so it's kind of hit or miss. It actually looks like this entire side looks pretty good. And then moving up the barrel, there is no flaking off on that entire barrel. Flip the gun around, that side of the barrel looks pretty good as well, and then we move down here. It's pretty much all on this side and the top portion of the gun. Again, nothing touches this area. Even my sling here does not rub against this, and it's not seen any abuse. It hasn't been rubbed against any metal. But that is a big point. Let's move on to the next point about the Affinity Elite now. This gun has a TSA pad. You can see it right there. This pad on this gun's actually been pretty good. You can go ahead, remove it, swap it to some other ones. Uh, the screws are right here in the end. You'll be able to see that when I do my teardown video and full cleaning. Not really much to clean inside of here, but might as well do it. Yeah. This gun doesn't have all the recoil that you get on the Super Black Eagle 3 throughout the stock. But again, even shooting three and a half inch loads, as long as you're not shooting them the entire day, every single load, um, I haven't felt anything really on my shoulder. Um, this gun absorbs it pretty well for the size of it. 
and how light it is as well. The next thing we need to take a look at is this front sight up here. Let me see if I can bring this around so you guys can see it a little bit better. This is a true glow fiber optic sight and it works tremendously well. Whether it be nighttime or dusk or the middle of the day, that red center with yellow around the outside, you're just able to pick up birds so easily. Looking down this barrel, and that thing is just so bright, even in low light conditions. I think that's one of the greatest additions to this gun and one of the reasons that I purchased it as well. This gun does come with four choke tubes. You can see this in my unboxing video if you really want, but right now I do have the long range choke in it. Uh, it comes with a little bit of a, a shorter choke, and then you get three true lock chokes, close range, medium range, and long range. I've been using the long range choke the entire season. I did put the mid range in, did a pattern test with it. Lots of people online were telling me, you know, you don't use, you don't need to use a long range choke for dog hunting, use the mid range. Went out for one hunt, used it for maybe one or two shots. I couldn't hit anything. I threw the long range choke back in. It was dead on hitting every single thing. So I guess it's just user preference of what choke you really want, but I've been using the long range choke the entire season. It's what I'm used to. It's where I know where I put the barrel and where I'm used to shooting. Uh, it's going to hit the target. I did do a lot of pattern testing with these chokes as well. You can check that out in my other videos. And I just like how this long range choke performs. One of the things I already mentioned as well is this nice raised rib. I'd say it's raised a little bit more than my Benelli Supernova and more than other guns I've seen. But again, shouldering this gun, I do like exactly where this sits. You know, exactly when I put this up to my eye, I am looking right down that barrel. The rib is completely level and I'm just dead on target. One of the largest features of the Franck Affinity Elite, see it right here, this large bolt and extended charging handle. It just feels really good on your hand. You can't even, you don't even need to be looking at this and you're able to put your hand on there and know exactly where that is in the charging handle. You know, sounds good too. To lock it back, push that right there. And again, release. It's worked really good. Like I said, if you have this back, you load your shells in, and you push this bolt release versus actually just kind of releasing it manually, you're gonna be fine. That hits hard, far enough forward that you're not gonna have any issues and any clicking of the gun when you go to pull the trigger. Again, take a look at that. That nice, big bolt release and that large extended charging handle. Definitely make it easier up here in Michigan when we have those cold uh, late season duck hunts and goose hunts that you're able to be able to use all these controls easily with gloves on. Carrying into that point though when you do have gloves on let's take a look at the safety. So the safety's right down here it is on safe right now it's a little bit small. There's the other side it is the same size as a normal safety that you would expect to see on any firearm but I wish this being more of a waterfowl geared gun they took liberties to extend the bolt handle and this charging you would have thought they would have went ahead and enlarged the safety as well there are a few aftermarket mods that you can add on to this to make the safety a little bit larger but that would be the only thing that I would really change on this gun uh, to make it a little bit better feature. There's supposedly an enlarged, a uh, lengthened forcing cone inside this barrel uh, to be able to give those pellets a little bit larger, longer time traveling down the barrel to be compressed before they exit. Not sure how well that really improves. I have been seeing pretty good patterns out of this gun, so maybe it does help a little bit. I just thought I'd throw that in there as one of the features that they advertise as well. Going back down here towards the trigger, Again, I'll show you that it's unloaded. There's nothing in this gun, because now I'm gonna show you 
the trigger pull on this. Let's go ahead, advance that bolt forward, turn it off safety, you get a nice solid click, and now I'm gonna pull this trigger. It is a very nice, light trigger. Uh, it's not like you have to really reef on it. I'd say it's light to medium. Um, it's not super light that you're gonna bump it and it's going to accidentally go off. But again, I'm trying to do that again. I'll pull it. I haven't actually put a force gauge on here to measure how hard it is to pull but comparing it to other guns, it's in that medium to light range. I'd say that about wraps up my one year, little over a season review on the Franke Affinity Elite. Like I said, when I started the video, I am very happy with this gun. I would go ahead and purchase it again, even with the minor issue of the Cerakote flaking off. I will keep you posted on that, like I said. But yeah, I, I'm very happy, very pleased with this gun. My buddy, he just bought a brand new gas gun the same time that I purchased this gun. I don't think I would ever go to anything but inertia gun. It's kind of what I started with and what I will keep on shooting. So here's the one year Franke Affinity Elite review. Getting one more close up here of the entire gun. Man, it sure does look good. This bronze looking gold color makes this gun look really great. Hopefully I'll be able to do a two year, three year, four year, five year review and I'll keep on liking this gun. I know this has many years to come of lots of good shooting, um, lots of kills coming up, and lots of great waterfowl seasons. Make sure you catch my next video. Until then, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Also make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next videos I will be posting and leave your questions, comments, and suggestions below.